<laughs> Welcome to Sailing Liberty. We're really glad you're back. I know it doesn't look good. Okay. Why the alternator is out? I gotta tell you, it's a long, crazy story. Today on Sailing Liberty. But first, this. Charge you scallywags! Aye, Captain! Like any great adventure, it begins with a girl and a sword! Before you know it, the tail twists into a t-shirt. Hey, click in the link below in the description box and get one of our shirts. Bye now, and join the adventure. As I was going over the cork and carry mountains, I met with Captain Farrell and his money. He was kind. I first produced my pistol and then produced my rapier. Stand and deliver, for you are a bold deceiver. I said, Ooh, do da. Wait for the daddy o. Wait for the daddy, oh, there's whiskey in the jar. Wow, thank God the boat's still in one piece. I cannot get over this marina. Look at the action of the water and the waves. Not to mention these docks are so tall. It's crazy. They're made out of pipes. They're just floating on top of the water. It's so dangerous. All right, well, this is it. As you guys remember, we came from Milford through the Hell's Gate around Manhattan to Lincoln Harbor Marina and today we are going from Lincoln Harbor Marina down to Arizona uh, Narrows to the Atlantic Ocean. Climb aboard and head on out of the harbor. Jersey City there on the right and there's Lower Manhattan. Empire State Building. Wow. Later New York. Take care, and we'll be back soon, hopefully, God willing. Verrazano Bridge, here we come! Straight down wind, but you know what? These are some nutty winds in here. What are you gonna do? You got the wind blowing straight out to sea, right through the narrows. I'm just gonna take advantage of it. Wing on wing, come on, get man. We're going to the Atlantic Ocean today, everybody. Boy, and that is a big, big ship. That's one of your biggest ones. It does fit through the Panama Canal, though, so uh, way to go, Evergreen. Ever lovely. Nice to see ya. Well, here we are. First time in Atlantic Ocean. First time in any ocean, honestly. Well, this is Atlantic City. In the distance, I see the buildings. Got a couple of taller buildings there. I guess those are hotels, casinos, whatever you want to call it. It's been a heck of a day on the water. Uh, good to see the dinghies hanging in there. And uh, we're looking good. All right. After two days full sailing, we arrived to the Atlantic City. Yeah, we're motoring right into the harbor and uh, things are going great until... Getting in just before dark, running the motor and getting there, purring like a kitten. And the power's putting out on the new alternator setup, everything's working perfectly. What a system. Yeah, we're putting out volts. Let's see what our other battery bank's got. 14.65, all right, it's looking good. So the engine overheated. It was toast. When I went below, I could smell something very hot. And now with the uh, alternator bracket off and the secondary alternator off, this motor is fried. I mean, look at that paint, it is burnt. And the dough boat guy? Okay, I call them, they're like, it's going to be an hour. Yeah, so I wasn't going to wait an hour and hope he shows up and the tide doesn't turn and start washing me out to sea or onto the rocks because thank God it was a slack tide. There was no wind. It was perfect. I just sat there dead in the water. You almost made it to the marina. And you very close. start to tow with your own boat. Yeah, isn't that incredible? I said, you know what? I'm not going to wait <laughs> around. Robot. What if it's two hours? What if the tide <laughs> starts going out? So um, I just hooked up a line and started towing. And it, you were and rowing? It, yeah, I was rowing. <laughs> And it was going great. And I'm I'm almost to the I almost there I was going to the marina right there. It was like the best marina in town. My buddy found it for me. The row until here and he wanted to bring the boat in this marina. I was headed right to the marina and the guy shows up and he's like, 
He got the better marina. The towboat guy arrived. Guy said he knew better and I said, okay. Cause I like to trust the guy who knows his stuff and he's like the captain and shit like yeah. that. So here we go. So he toted around here through this river. Uh, went through this bridge just fine until here. So he whips me through the freaking um, sleuth they have set up there at the railroad bridge and the boat goes whipping around and I had to fight the rudder. The, the fixed bridge is 35 feet just to keep the boat from hitting the sides. The guy was wild. And the water's pouring down, must be on the end of the low tide or whatever, coming down. And then I see the eye beam and I'm like, stop! And boom, the mast hits right in. And then we go boom, right across it. He looks back at me like, what do I do? And I'm like, keep going. I don't want to be like stuck in there going like that and just tearing everything up. And it's like, dong, 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 dong. And we just went right through that. And it was like, oh my God, I was down in the freaking pit of the uh, the footwell of the cockpit just to protect myself from death. Unbelievable. Oh, come on, tow guy. Seriously, this is supposed to be your home port. He probably thought he could just make it. He was just inches away. You're not gonna believe this. Yeah, look at that. That boat with the mast rake back like that? That's our hoke hey. What a wreck done damage. I guess I'm going to see what I can do to rectify it and pull it up straighter before it gets any worse. But boy, that mass tabernacle sure paid off. All right, there she is. I took my main sheet and I attached it to my forward halyard and uh, straightened out the mast until we had time to get together with the boat yard to uh, figure out how to derig a sailboat. They'd never had a sailboat there before. Wonder why? Because you can't get there with the sailboat. But they were super nice. They let me sleep in the clubhouse and uh, you know we worked together to figure out how to do one of these one of these crazy oh, sailboats. So much for the top five blue weather upgrades. Now our boat is wrecked. Looks like it's back to the ranch for another summer of boat repairs. Oh my god, this is so tiny. Why don't you come down and be in here for a second? Everything is looking fried here. The head got super hot. The whole way back, I mean, look at this around the spark plugs. It's crazy. So I got the head off. Nothing too crazy here. It's pretty greasy. The uh, head gasket tore pretty well. But here's the truth. Boom! We've got coolant and two cylinders, we blew a head gasket. Okay, we kind of figured that. It looks like our valves are all pretty coated with uh, mineral buildup. I think this engine ran with a blown head gasket for a while before she just said no more. Once you have that much water in two cylinders, I got a feeling no engine's gonna run. Wow, I mean, it was cooked. The head gasket is just peeling and curled. It got really hot. This sucker went through a lot of hell, but this is a tough motor. I say let's find out. I'm blaming the freaking thermostat. So let's boil it and find out when she's going to open. I got my thermometer and we ran a test. Heat it slowly. We want to find out what temperature it opens. I'm boiling this thing. I'm at 212 degrees and it still hasn't opened. It is never going to open. A great running motor, a great trip brought to a screeching halt. Why they don't make a thermostat that stays open when it fails? <laughs> no one knows. So let's make this motor as good as it can be. First thing to do is get her cleaned up and get her ready to go. So the first thing I got to do is open up the uh, water jacket cover and see how bad it is because everybody talks about it and this one's got a lot of stuff in it. We got piles and piles of crud and rust and you know what? We're going to get it cleaned out. We're going to press on here. So once I see this, I know it's time to get busy with a cleanup crew. I took a shopping bag and I bolted it on so that when the water is flowing out and spilling over the side, it goes right into the shopping bag and we collect all that crap and we get it out of the engine so we can have coolant flowing nice around our cylinders. So I got a special high pressure hose adapter for a garden hose and uh, started blasting through all the water channels. We've got all these different water channels all over the engine. And I just went one by one and just kept flushing and flushing and watching the stuff come out into the bag. Once it was all done, I got a couple of head studs here that I got to replace. The threads were shot, 
Time to clean up these holes. I've got my wire brush here. A little bit of torch action to burn off the grease and loosen up any rust. Get them scrubbed out with a nice brush. Get ready to glue in some new studs. A little Loctite and we're going to get those three replaced and the rest were fine. We're going to get this engine back to A1 condition. Take your uh, thermostat housing and other parts like this. Clean up the mating surfaces and I wash them in acid. Soaked overnight in acid and they come out looking great. Ready for paint and ready to go back together. Perfect. Clean everything up. Control rust. Now we're looking good. We got a whole new stud set from Moyer Marine for our uh, water jacket cover. We're ready to put things back together. All right, this is looking good. Everything's ready. We got all these surfaces as best we can. I mean, it's an old engine, it's not going to be perfect. So we took our Dremel tool, brass wire wheel, and went ahead and just cleaned and polished as good as we could to get all these surfaces in and around all the valves as clean as we can and uh, flushed it all out and vacuumed the hell out of it with the shop vac and we're cleaned up and ready to go. I mean, these are tough engines, you know. You can fix them. Cylinders are looking clean. Everything's looking good. Anybody knows about this? Here's my specs and my pistons. And time to put the water jacket cover back on. So Moyer Marine recommends to drill this cap so you direct water this way and this way and that helps to improve the circulation. All the decades of experience with these engines and people have done analysis of the temperature patterns. They've really developed a, a really great way to massage them and get the most out of them. And that's what we're doing here. Um, I coated the entire surface of this plate with uh, the silicone RTV and that'll prevent rust on it and lock it in there along with the gasket. And there we go. Everything's put together and starting to look bright and shiny. I'm seeing a really nice looking engine block. We've got rust control happening. we got everything locked in. I feel like you know, I want to start thinking about getting some head gaskets on this thing. We cleaned up the carburetor side of the engine. I cut a, actually cut a uh, fresh hole in the engine compartment so we have an access door on the carburetor side which we never had before. Almost 60 years, and uh, now you can get at the uh, carburetor side of the engine, no problem. I just love these access to the intake. It's a sweet opening. My new favorite hatch. How about a carburetor? We went ahead and just bought a brand new Zenith carburetor, and there it is. And we have the Indigo uh, crankcase ventilation scavenger. So you have your crankcase ventilation, your fumes and gases from your crankcase enter here through this tube. With this little fitting added to your carburetor, you're ready to suck all those gases right back into the engine and burn them up instead of letting them go into your into your engine compartment and subsequently your entire boat. Takes the stink level down, not that there really was any, but it's just one of the things you can do to make your engine better. And we did everything we could to take this Atomic 4 to the top. Like this. This blurry picture is an extreme close-up of our optical sensor for our Indigo Electronics ignition system and uh, it gives you improved ignition throughout the range. We can increase our fuel economy and it's totally reliable. The other great thing about it is it's four screws and you can actually put right back in your points and condenser, which we decided we we're gonna be ready to do. We capped it, put it in a little box and it sits on the shelf with other spares. In case we ever have an electronics failure, we can just pop the old system back in because it works. But this is a vast improvement and we did it and it's one of the great upgrades to the engine that we've done and we're very happy. We cannot wait to get on the sea. And this is the inside of our old distributor. You know what? You still use this part of the distributor even with the electronic system. This is a centrifugal advance and it looks like it needs a little TLC. So I opened it up to put in the new electronic system and the uh, optical sensor and of course I'm going to take advantage of the opportunity to do the best I can to get her back up to top shape. Basic plate, you can see a little pitting and so on. We took uh, a wire wheel and really hit it, got it really cleaned up. And we took our uh, weights for our centrifugal and cleaned them up and same with our shaft. And Indigo gives you brand new springs to go with it because they are calibrated because they counterbalance the centrifugal effect on these weights. And we put it all together, touch of oil, and it should be good to go for another 50 years. I know your spark is solid, 
But you got to have a good head. So I went to the local hot rod shop and I said, hey, could I get a head machine here for my boat? And they said, well, frankly, we only build $20,000 race car engines. And I said, ow, I didn't realize. I thought this was, you know, no. But then the guy said, I might know a guy. Maybe he can meet you in the parking lot in like 10 minutes. So, lo and behold, it was the same guy. I met him in the parking lot in like 10 minutes. And he said, you know what, let me see it. And I showed him, and here it is. Two days later, he called me up and said, your head is ready. I took it home and ground it down. 50 bucks. Boom. Perfect, like a mirror. And ready to go back on the motor. He painted the top of it, and I think she looks pretty good. Two head gaskets. That's what they developed all these years. Two head gaskets. That's how it works on these Atomic 4s. Two head gaskets. It's crazy, but that's what you do. Two head gaskets. I got a couple of new head bolts. In fact, three of them. Got those from Moyer Marine. And uh, it's ready to go. You can see the old points of the dents are still here. Wow. It's running great. Thank God. All that investment. All right, we even invested in new gauges. These are from Moyer Marine. Okay, so we've got 1,000 RPM. We're looking at high 30s in oil pressure, and we're still down around 130 on temperature. There's our uh, electronic ignition, working like a champ. Wow. All right. I got to tell you, I'm loving every minute of it. It's just about time to get back to the boat. I got to get my alternator bracket going and make some juice. All right, kids. See you outside. Yeah, let's have a look at the motor. Uh, oil manifold, it has three oil pressure sensors. Some are for pressure, some are for on off. Um, oil filter, gas filter. Um, you got a pressure sensor, you got a, a temperature sensor here. It's a very uh, advanced place to put it. It's it's the hottest water in the system. It go, It's the water when it's leaving yeah. the engine and going to the coolant area so it records the highest temperature and that's uh that's set up to the um the alarm overheating alarm this is another uh, coolant sensor this is set up to the gauge it's right on the head so you got two different temperature sensors one for the gauge and one for the alarm also, um, you have a, a oil pressure switch that shuts off the um, second alternator, which is not mounted right this moment. It goes on these standoffs. These right here. It's sitting over here with a custom bracket. I'm going to show this right here. That's the bracket. And uh, it goes actually that way. And then the alternator goes on to it. And that's your high output for charging your house battery. That's got to slap, slap back over there. The engine got rebuilt and now that's due to go back on. Beautiful engine, huh? Oh, it's a beauty. Atomic 4, it's a classic. It's because the design is, I don't know if it's the 20s or the 30s, it's the most there's more of these engines were made than any other marine engine in history. And there's still 20,000 of them in boats, um, just like this one. Um, 50 years later, still running fine. Um, it has, uh, it has, you know, the oil filter system. This is, adds, take, the oil comes off of here, it goes through this blue pipe, it comes up to here, it gets filtered. We also get the pressures off of the oil there for the different reasons. One is for, like I said, for the second alternator, it doesn't turn on the second alternator until there's oil pressure, which means the engine's running already, so you're not fighting the alternator to start the engine. Um, you get an oil pressure gauge, which is here. That's one, that's one of those senders. And the other one is um, for the alarm, low oil pressure alarm. goes along with the um, overheating coolant alarm. 
Cool. Yeah, it's all new. It all works great. We'll have to run it for the camera one of these days. Gotta get the batteries out here and plug them back in. It's beautiful, Dad. Thanks, babes. The motor got us into trouble. The tabernacle saved us from the pickle. The tabernacle saved my life. It saved our ship. And you know what? Thank God we had it. So, time to get her fixed. The deck took a pretty good shot from that bridge. I mean, that bridge wasn't going anywhere. And uh, Tabernacle's at the shop now. We bent some bolts, but we survived. And uh, it's time to get this deck fixed. So first things first, we gotta cut open the deck. And you know what? I hope to get away with these smaller cuts, but grain and balsa had taken on a lot of water through this giant crack that was formed by the, uh, you know, bridge was it crashed our uh, mast and bent back our tabernacle and uh, so I ended up having to go ahead and make a nice big cut which is fine so we're able to get out all the rotten balsa and dig it back until we could see that we're clear nice handwork to dig under do a little undercut and this was more than enough to clear it we got everything cleared out and dried out and then came back and did a full refill with solid fiberglass. I was able to take the original pieces of decking and put them right back in after layers and layers of epoxy and fiberglass cloth and epoxy and fiberglass cloth. I put the deck pieces back on. Now, after we get back our tabernacle, it's time to jump in and bolt it all together. It's the door for here. I just have the door off because I was working on this because we, re we rebuilt the whole structure here. So this piece of metal is going to go here. It's made just for this at the metal shop. It's going to get bent because it's, the bolts suck it up. It's got to get drilled and put together. It's ready to go though. Everything's ready up there except the coat of paint and put together. Wow, those guys did an amazing job. The tabernacle's back. It looks better than ever. And uh, they charged me a few bucks though. It pretty much cost me the same as it did to get the thing made originally. We're bolted in and pow, pow, pow. it's back in and better than new. We're ready to rock. No matter how tight your boat is, on the hard, she could still end up wet. A dry village is a dry boat. If you live in the Northeast or anywhere where it gets cold and you pull your boat out in the winter, you gotta have a garboard plug. What do you wanna worry about your boat filling up the bilge and getting your soul ruined? Come on. Put a garboard plug in, it's no big deal. All you gotta do is drill a freaking hole. All you gotta do is drill a hole and then grab a sawzall and cut a little relief for your flange. Now, you jump in with a chisel and you give yourself a nice location and you're gonna get ready to bed in your garboard plug with a little bit of thickened epoxy. No big deal. But you know what we found out? We got a really thick boat here. I'm talking about over three quarters of an inch. That is solid fiberglass, and it all looks fresh and crispy like the day it was made 60 years ago. So we got a perfect flush installation here. This is a solid brass garboard plug, and uh, I couldn't be happier with it. The next step here is to jump in with a uh, thickened epoxy, bed the whole thing in, drop in a couple of screws, there's the plug, you're off to the races. Winter comes, you just take the plug out, you're up on the hard, and no water is going to stay in your boat. It's going to just drain out. You're going to have a dry boat every spring, and you don't have to worry about your boat over the winter. Now that is peace of mind. Well, we got a carburetor, an alternator, and well, a lot of other aiders. I'm pretty sure of that. And we're mechanically sound and ready to go. What do you think, sweet Barry? She's mechanically sound, but what about touch of makeup? Yeah, it's true. A little varnish would make a really good showing. Hmm. A little sanding, I got a feeling, is in my future. Do it. Our boat has gone from great to wreck to awesome. Thanks for watching. We love ya. Please subscribe to Sailing, Sailing Liberty. Liberty. All right, got it. Let's do a playback. Thanks for watching. If you like, comment, and please subscribe. We're a new channel. Every subscription counts. Thank you so much.
then we look forward to seeing you on the next show. Sailing Liberty.